What's up everyone, Hunter here, back with another video. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new, please consider subscribing. And like I promised last week, every week you'll get to see my pups. Kaya, come here, come here. Oh, we got Maverick. Kaya, Kaya. And Kaya. All right, so last week I went over the application process for med school. And if you haven't already watched that video, I got into med school. So this week, I'm going to go through my full AMCAS application that got me accepted into medical school. If you haven't submitted your primary applications yet, it's not too late for this cycle, but I wouldn't wait much longer. Like July 1st should probably be your cutoff. So by the time this video is out, you got about two weeks before like last day for submission. I've seen a couple other videos of people sharing their entire AMCAS application. And although I didn't use these when I was applying and filling out mine, I saw how they could be really helpful. So I'm hoping that by putting this video out there, it might give some people some ideas, maybe some encouragement that, I mean, my application is not by any means top tier. So this could give you the little push you need to say, hey, I am good enough to get into med school and submit. So I'm hoping that this can just help at least someone in their med school journey, whether you're thinking about applying this cycle and just haven't pulled the trigger yet, or if you're a pre-med and looking at kind of what you need to do in order to be accepted to med school, this can kind of give you some inspiration. I don't wanna waste any more of your time, so let's get to it and pull it up. I'm gonna, my editing skills aren't great, so we're gonna see if we can get my face and my application on the screen at the same time. All right, here we go. So to start the AMCAS application, it's just gonna show kind of some identifying information. I did block out some of my like address, phone number, email, because I don't need everyone bombarding me with things. Um, but so it starts out just identifying kind of some demographic information, get some biographic information, birthday, mine's coming up, and where you were born, that kind of thing. So then you get into a little bit of like your childhood. So, I mean, I grew up in a middle income family, paid for most of my college with scholarships and some student loans, got a little bit of help from the family. And then it talks a little bit about uh, different family information. So you can see like your parents, what level of education they got, that sort of thing, where they're from. Um, I was a first generation college student. Neither of my parents went to college. Um, neither, none of their parents did. I have one younger sister. She's now actually 24. Um, and then it goes through a little bit of additional information um, that may apply to you, may not. I had no's for all those. I'm gonna try and like skim through this. Like I'll touch on some things pretty hard, but I don't wanna make this a 30 minute video going over this 20 page document that is the AMCAS application. Um, but here's the juicy stuff. We're getting into the grades. So for my freshman year, um, I, I really didn't do too bad. I had a C plus in Gen Bio 1, which was a real bummer. Um, throughout high school, I just didn't really have to study a whole lot to get good grades. And I felt that I could continue the same study habits or lack thereof once I got to college. Uh, I was working a part-time job as a bike mechanic and not studying at all. And my grades started to reflect that. Um, we had the C plus in Bio, didn't do so hot in bio two, but had improved um, religion and another religion class didn't do so hot, but overall not too bad. Um, English got a B as well, but can't really be too upset with A's and B's. So we rounded out this, the freshman year gen chem B pluses. I mean, definitely could have been better, but I was still trying to figure out how to study because I had never studied before in my life. Took a couple summer classes just to kind of get some prereqs in, but got them done there. So um, then we hopped into sophomore year. I was still working this job as a bike mechanic and I um, did decent. I mean, I, I cut back my hours a little bit and we had, I mean, a B plus in Orgo Lab and then a B in Orgo 2. But overall, I, I wasn't too disappointed with my grade sophomore year. And then we moved into junior year and continued just this upward trend. We got rid of all the C's that had ever appeared. I think freshman year was the only year that I got a C. Um, so, I mean, we improved up to junior and senior year, all A's and B's, did pretty well. Senior year, I took one pass fail class for applied immunology. It was a 500 level course, not a prereq that's required by any means for med school. So I didn't wanna risk getting a bad grade while doing everything else I was in the time um, and having that affect my application. Looking back, 
I probably would have done fine and didn't need to worry about it. But that was kind of the thought process I went through when I decided to take that course pass fail. Um, so then after my, I kind of went through this, uh, my, my path to med school in my last video, but after my undergrad degree, I stayed at Creighton and taught in the exercise science department while getting my MBA. So all of these graduate courses from Creighton are business administration courses. As you can see, I did very well in the program. Um, the only kind of blemish I have here is this B in advanced managerial finance. Uh, and that would be because I took my final um, while on spring break and just wasn't focused. So don't take your finals on spring break, get them done before you go anywhere. So then after that, I knew that most med schools wouldn't care if I had a master's in business. So I enrolled in a master's in medical anatomy degree at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. And I did fairly well in that as well. Um, had A's for the most part. And then just at the end there, with everything 2020 had going on, um, as well as these classes just being very difficult to study for in um, the manners that they were taught, I had some B's, but overall, not too disappointed with those. So we can see here, all of your education shows up on your, M or your AMCAS. So we have where I went to high school, my undergrad degree, my MBA, and then my master's of science in medical anatomy. So then we get down to the GPAs. Now this one I kind of highlighted. So from, from undergrad, I had a 344 science GPA and a 363 overall. So I mean, very, I would say average as a medical student applicant. Um, room to improve, but definitely like wasn't a super weak area on my application. What I didn't realize until I had a exit interview with one of the schools that rejected me this year was that my graduate science GPA only counted eight of the credits from my uh, master's in medical anatomy degree. So when I went back up and looked here, we can see that neuroanatomy and neuroanatomy lecture, the two classes that I did the worst in in that program were considered biology courses. Mm. And the rest of these courses were all considered health. So like gross anatomy lab and lecture, you would think would be biology courses or considered in your science GPA. But on my AMCAS, they were verified as health courses and therefore not included in my science GPA on the official report. Now, any school can look at your grades up here and see that you did well in those courses. But I'm guessing that most aren't going through every individual course that you took and instead are just looking at the summary down here of your GPAs and then looking up when they need to, when they need more information. So I went and calculated my graduate science GPA when I included all those courses and it was a 357. So an improvement over my undergrad and then my total GPA improved as well, which is definitely what they wanna see. Um, and also made me like proud of how I performed in both of my graduate degrees. Now I also wanted to highlight the dates for this whole application. So as I said in my last video, I was told not to apply until I got a rejection from the school that I was waitlisted at during the prior application cycle. And that didn't happen until the end of July. So July 31st of 2020 is when I submitted my AMCAS, which like I just said in this video, July 1st is kind of your cutoff. So July 31st, I was very late. And because I was so late, there are so many applications that AMCAS needs to process or the AAMC that needs to process that my application wasn't actually completely processed until the 10th of September. So that was six whole weeks that my applications weren't being looked at school by schools. They were just sitting there being processed by the AAMC. I had also scheduled to take another MCAT on the 11th of September. So I took the MCAT the day after my application was processed. And that morning of my MCAT, I started just getting bombarded with all of my secondary applications. Now, I would typically say you should have your MCAT score before applying so that you can better refine your list of schools that you apply to. But being so late in the application cycle, I didn't really have that option. I'm gonna let Kai outside and then we'll look at my MCAT scores. Okay, so Long story short, I just didn't study for the MCAT. I knew that I should have, I wanted to and had planned to, but it's just not how it worked out for me. I might go into another video with a more in-depth explanation of how I studied for the MCAT and how I improved my score each time, which is definitely something to be proud of. Um, but I definitely would have liked to see a higher score that would have made me more competitive at more schools. Um, but the first test I took 
uh, was going into my senior year of college. Uh, throughout the spring semester, I was planning to study for the MCAT and take it early May, as you can see, May 19th here. Um, but I was taking physics, genetics, and biochem at the same time and just didn't study for the MCAT. So I studied for it for two weeks, got a 504. Wasn't too upset. Like for two weeks of studying, a 504 is not bad, um, but definitely needed to improve it. So when I applied again, I um, had enrolled in a self-paced course through Princeton Review and had given myself 12 weeks to study full-time for the exam. And I never got my study materials. I know people have had good experiences with the Princeton Review, but my experience was not great. Never got my study materials, really only used um, a few practice tests, again, taking like two to three weeks. Improved by one point, wasn't the greatest performance, but I thought it should be enough to get me in. So I didn't retake it initially, and then I got waitlisted. And then this last one, when I was waitlisted, I was, pretty confident I was gonna get in. And then they told me not to spend any money on studying for the MCAT or anything. So I just took that as don't study. Um, and I also felt like if I had gotten in, I would have wasted that time studying. So I just really didn't wanna study for the MCAT until I knew I wasn't going to med school last fall. When I found out at the end of July, I looked into taking the MCAT and the last date that most schools would accept was September 11th. So I registered for that date, had six weeks to study, improved to a 507, which was pretty good. If you look at my, uh, actual like sub scores, there was a lot more in the tank on that 507. For some reason, my cars on that day was the worst I'd ever done, even on a practice exam. But overall content with a 507, it got me in this cycle. So not too disappointed, but I know I could have scored much better had I actually given a good 12 week study period and studied for this exam, how it's meant to be studied for. Again, that's all on me too. I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses, just straight up, I didn't study for the MCAT how it should have been studied for and how I wish I did. So the next section of the uh, AMCAS is your experiences. So you can have up to 15 experiences listed and three of those can be meaningful experiences. And all that means is that you get an additional little paragraph to explain um, that specific experience. Now Matt wants to go outside, so I'm gonna let him out and then we'll get to these. Okay, again, I don't want this to be a super long video, so I'm just gonna kind of highlight these. Um, and now that it's, I mean, this is a whole year later, so most of these are different now already. Like this Habitat for Humanity only went through 7 2020 because that's when it was um, submitted, but I have been doing more volunteer build days through June of this year. So that's been an ongoing experience with more hours here. Um, so then I was a, medical documentation specialist for about six months. Um, I was basically, it's a virtual scribe. I was able to scribe patient interactions through a online program, but due to 2020, I got canceled and lost that position. They just didn't have the need for it anymore. Um, then this experience, I'm not gonna like read the descriptions to all these. If you want to, you can pause the video, read the description, see what I actually did. Uh, but so we had a few different experiences in my master's of medical anatomy program. I probably would have liked to break these up, but I didn't know what other activities to delete in order to make room for them. So I just kind of grouped everything that I did as like extracurriculars in my master's of medical anatomy program into this one experience. So then we have two different, um, or this one is kind of like a volunteer or no, this is the job that I had after undergrad working in the exercise science department. Um, it was a meaningful experience because um, I really learned that I enjoy teaching a lot. And that's where like, if any of you have any questions about the whole application process, I've, I've done it three times now, although I didn't do it perfectly, I have a pretty good idea of what a good application looks like. And I, I really enjoy advising and teaching. So if you have any questions, just reach out to me and I would love to help you out. So then I also did some research um, in T cells when I was an undergrad. So I actually did more of the um, client testing and less of the like bench work in this research, but it was a really fun experience. I got to present at the um, American College of Sports Medicine annual conference in front of a bunch of people. I was a personal trainer, still am. If you have any fitness goals that you want to meet and you want to hire me as a personal trainer, I am currently taking on clients as I have a little bit of spare time, but not too much. And I don't want to just cut people off once I get into med school. So I'm open to training a few people through med school, but um, those spots are going to close quickly as more people are finding out that that's what I do. Uh, I was a volunteer transporter at the Creighton Hospital for a little bit, but they moved locations and then it wasn't as feasible for me to do that during the school year. Um, I have a couple observation um, 
experiences on here as well. If I were to change how I listed out these activities, I probably would have grouped my observation experiences together um, to make room for other activities. This one was a, a student run club called Blue Test Prep at Creighton University where we helped uh, tutor low income families um, and just students that needed help on the ACT. And it was a super meaningful experience. And again, I got that teaching experience and found that I really enjoy teaching and advising. And I think that I would really enjoy um, doing medicine in academia down in the road. So then I was also part of the Love Your Melon crew while I was at Creighton's campus. And I have a couple other shadowing opportunities here. And then I did, I don't know if I have both of these listed. Yeah, so I only have one listed. Um, I was the uh, founder and president of two different clubs at my undergrad institution. Here I have listed the Creighton Cycling Club, but I also started the Creighton Strength Club. So I was just taking the passions that I had for different hobbies and making them more accessible to other people and made it made myself an opportunity to meet other people that might be interested in the hobbies that I had. I was also um, on a landscaping crew for my dad's landscaping company in central Minnesota for a few summers when I was home from college. And then I had the opportunity to go on a medical mission trip to Guatemala when I was in high school and got to see a lot of really cool surgeries and whatnot down there. So that was a good um, observation experience for me. And then another um, just work opportunity was being a bike mechanic, as I had mentioned before. So then we have the personal statement. Now, obviously, this is going to be very different for everyone. Um, for me, I kind of outlined how I learned about what a, um, what a physician did, um, which was through my mom. And then I talk about the part-time jobs that I've had in my past and how I kind of relate those to medicine and the skills that they've taught me and that I enjoy. Uh, then I talk a little bit about my experiences shadowing and going on medical mission trips. Then I kind of discussed how my first application cycle didn't go the way that I wanted and why I decided to go and get a master's in business administration and then why I decided to go get my uh, master's in medical anatomy. I outlined some of the uh, kind of hardships that I had during my medical anatomy agree degree and then kind of just summarized with all of my experiences combined why I think being a physician is the right job for me. The next section is the letters of evaluation or recommendation. So I blocked out my contacts here because I'm sure that they don't really need to be um, listed in my video, but I did have one physician letter, a letter from the UNMC uh, department that I got my degree from. So it was like a committee letter. I did have one from Creighton when I was an undergrad there, but that one was kind of dated now that I've been out of Creighton for three years now. Um, and then I had three letters from Creighton professors. My committee letter from UNMC included many professors from that program, so I didn't feel the need to get another letter of rec from any of them. But I did want to have letters of rec from Creighton because I spent a lot of time there. And so I had the department chair for the exercise science department, who was also a professor for me when I was an undergrad. My research advisor was also a professor. And then the supervisor that I had while working during that fifth year at Creighton um, also taught me when I was an undergrad, but she was like my boss while I was working at Creighton. So then the final part of the application here is actually something that doesn't get sent to the medical schools themselves. This just kind of shows you uh, what all the schools you apply to were. So this is here on this, but I, I wanted to go to um, this other app I have, it's called Notion. And this is kind of where I um, kept track of all of my med school applications for this cycle. So using the MSAR resource through the AMC, I was able to fill out this uh, little spreadsheet in Notion where I kept track of all these applications. So these are all the schools that I applied to. You can see that I received secondaries from all of them, except for Nova Southeastern, not sure what happened to that one. Um, I have little notes for each one. I kind of changed these throughout the cycle, so most of them don't have any now. Um, but then down here, you can see these are the schools that I actually sent secondaries to, some of them I interviewed at, and then ultimately got accepted at Des Moines University in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, along with this information, I have the MCAT and GPA for each one. That's what I pulled from the MSAR. Um, and then I have, um, on some of them, the secondary dates, and then the rest of the sheet is like my login info for that, so we don't need to go to that stuff. Um, but I would definitely advise creating a sheet like this and kind of looking at their MCAT, GPA, figuring out what schools you would be competitive at. Because a lot of these that I say I'm not applying at are ones that after I got my MCAT score, I realized like there's no point in submitting the secondary because I'm just not competitive enough. And I could have saved a lot of money, but again, it was already late in the application cycle. I didn't want to wait any longer by waiting for my MCAT result to come back because by then it would have been October and just way too late. Um, so 
this is kind of how I went through uh, my application cycle and tracking what schools I was going to apply to. So there are a couple osteopathic schools on here. Obviously, I got into a DO school at Des Moines. So I did also submit the Acomas app. Um, but basically, it's the same application. Um, there's no meaningful experiences on that one. And I did tweak my personal statement to um, align more with the osteopathic school of thought. But essentially, they're the same applications, um, the grades and MCAT. I mean, everything else is the same. So that's, that's the whole application. We'll close out of this here quick. Getting accepted has really been a huge weight off my shoulders. I mean, for me specifically, I have a lot of financial burdens coming up with student loans being due in September again. Um, I'm gonna be 26 next month, so I'm gonna have to start paying for my own health insurance and just a lot of pressure from family and friends to get in and continue pursuing this career. And although they'd all be happy no matter what I did, they all knew that I wouldn't be happy if I didn't continue to pursue this. So there's just been a lot of pressure that has now been lifted now that I've been accepted into med school. By the time this video is coming out, Marin and I are actually finishing up apartment tours in Des Moines. So I'll hopefully know where I'm gonna be moving because I have to be moved within basically the next month before I start school at the end of July. I really hope some of you were able to find some of this information useful. Like I said, I didn't use these videos when I was applying, but I kind of wish that I did because there's a lot of useful information in seeing at least what the application process looks like and what other people kind of put on their applications and how they word things. If you want, you can go back through and kind of pause it on my activity descriptions and see kind of how I laid those out. If you have any questions or want to know more about the application, you can leave them in the comments below, or you can also uh, hit me up on Instagram. My Instagram is linked in the description below, as well as a bunch of different links and stuff um, that you might find useful. Again, I've been through three med school application cycles. Didn't do it perfectly any of the three times, but I'm now in, so you don't have to do it perfectly, but I do have a lot of advice and can definitely reach out um, if you want to reach out with any personal questions about your application, I would definitely feel comfortable helping you through the application process. I'm not a professional by any means, but I, I do know a thing or two about the application process having been through it three times. With that being said, I would appreciate it if you did all the things, you know, go like, comment, and subscribe down below, and we'll catch you in the next one.